Hey everybody, Jake here from Bearded Gear, and I've got a full review to do for you on the Spyderco Salt 2. If you can remember back, or if you watched the initial videos on these, either the unboxing or the first impressions that I did on this knife, I got this knife in tandem with the Spyderco Tenacious, which I'm about to review after I do this one. Anyway, I got these two knives because I had never owned a Japanese made Spider Co. or a Chinese made Spider Co. And with how into Spider Co. I am and with how many people love these knives, I just wanted to get a feel for them, see what they're all about, and yeah, just experience something new. See if I was missing anything, if it was going to start a new trend in my hobby. It's not, but I'm really glad that I experienced both of these. So, Let's talk about the Salt 2. The Salt 2 is in H1 blade steel. This one is the Warncliffe plain edge, and it's this really nice hollow saber grind. It's H1 steel is not edge retention focused. It's not toughness focused, but it's corrosion resistance focused. And for me, I talked about this in those other videos, but I, I could have just gotten a Delica or an Endura and that's what a lot of people own from the Japanese factory and what they love the most. But I knew that I, if I put one of those in my collection, it was never going to get carried for any reason. I just, it wouldn't be a knife that I'd put in my pocket over other knives that I own and enjoy and know that I love. It's a backlock. I don't like backlocks. I, if I'm going to carry a backlock, it's going to be my fluted carbon fiber native five and S90V. That's a backlock I can kind of get behind. A Delica or an Endura, not so much. But so the point is I, I wanted to pick something that was specialized, something that I had a reason to carry on certain occasions. Otherwise, it, it would never make it on my into my pocket for just a normal occasion. So by getting the one that is corrosion resistance focused, this is a waterproof knife for all intents and purposes. Now all of a sudden there's a case for me carrying it. And I have a couple of times. So if I'm going to the beach, if I'm going kayaking, if I'm going fishing, if I'm going to a pool party, anywhere that the knife in my pocket is at high risk of getting wet, this is a great one to carry. Even uh, I've carried this a couple of times, like just to feel it out because I'm trying, I've been trying to get ready to review it for you guys, right? So I've been trying to make a point to put it in pocket every now and then to cut some things with it and get a real sense for it. Not just give you a review based on holding it a couple of times and, and then talking from any place of authority like I know anything about it. That's the way I review knives. I want to use them first. I want to have experiences having them in pocket, pulling them out, cutting things. So as I've carried this, I've put it in pocket a couple of times like for family walks. And if we go near like a fountain or something, I just make a point to dunk this knife in the water, get it soaking wet, sometimes for a photo op, sometimes just to do it. And then I fold it back up, still soaking wet. I might give it a little shake so it doesn't get my pocket as soaked, but like literally dripping wet and I'll just put it back in my pocket to see if I can get any corrosion to show up on this. And I haven't. I've gotten some water spots from the hard water that's like dried on it and then I give it a little wipe and it's gone. It's a fantastic steel in that regard. So this knife makes a lot of sense to me because you just don't have to worry about it in applications like I already described. Like if I'm going kayaking, I don't want to put a knife that's prone to corrosion in my pocket, especially a lot of the kayaking that I'm going to be doing this summer is salt water, like in harbors and stuff. I don't want to expose a lot of my knives to that environment. It just wouldn't be wise to do so. This is perfect for that. It's really, really good. And it's also basically a Delica, which come to find out, I was missing out on Delica Ergos all along because this knife, the comfort in my hand, my goodness, the way this handle is shaped and the way it just naturally leads to such an ergonomic grip. It's excellent. And then the way that they've done the hump here, this jimping, it feels, it might be better than like PM2 and Para 3 jimping. The way that this ramp is shaped and the way that my thumb locks right into it, wow, it's good. And then paired with this Warncliffe, I'm super glad I went with the Warney, but the way that it kind of spits that tip out, I have found for like piercing into material and then making cuts. This, all that's happening here with these ergos, this blade shape, the way it all comes together, 
it's so intuitive to use and it feels really, really good. I just really, really like it. Um, I mentioned in my first impressions video that I wasn't totally sure what the differences were between a salt and a delica. Um, they're essentially the same silhouette, but from what I understand, a, pe a couple people commented and I should have read those before I made this video, but there are some differences. So the Delica gets liners. This one does not, there's no liners inside. So I think in order to accomplish that, they make the plastic a little bit thicker. Um, other than that, what else was there? I don't remember. I think there was one other thing. Anyways, to a layman like me, <laughs> this is basically a Delica. It might be a slightly thicker profile. It might weigh a little bit different, but from what I remember of holding a Delica a very long time ago, it's a Delica. Um, is it plasticky? Yes, you can hear that when I actuate the lock. That sounds kind of plasticky, um, but that means it's super lightweight and it's also pretty inexpensive. These are, I think, 85-ish dollars, if I'm remembering correctly. And to me, to have a knife that's sub $100, that has a strength like this one's corrosion resistance, like has a real focused strength to it, that means it's very good in certain applications for real tasks. It's a knife that makes sense to me. If I paid the same amount for a Delica, again, I don't think I, I would rather spend that money on another thing. But for this, it makes a ton of sense. The Salt series, I think, is where it kind of clicks for me. And so I just really like it. And I can say too, even though it's plasticky and kind of hollow feeling in the handle, the strength of this lockup, first of all, there's zero play in any direction. The back lock is very secure and the ergos are fantastic. It doesn't feel low quality. It, it feels like they used a cheap material here but they took that cheap material and they worked it to its absolute best form it's really well done scales and they've got nice grip they're not too rough but they do give you really good traction i like that it's this high vis yellow color they do that on the salt series i think now they have some black options as well but i like it with this bright yellow and the satin blade this feels like a a beachy like fishing knife that I want to take to wet environments and that's really really cool to me. So is this going to lead to me buying a bunch of salt knives or delicas or other stuff from the Japanese factory? Not really but I think if I had tried a Japanese knife with a different one I probably wouldn't keep it. I'd probably ultimately just sell it or trade it or something whereas this one I'm going to keep this knife and there's going to be times where I want to carry this knife because my only other real like corrosion resistance focused knife is my quiet carry waypoint which is phenomenal but that knife costs more than three times as much as this one and is it better yeah you get better steel with way better edge retention properties and a nicer fit and finish better materials all throughout the knife it's a better knife for sure. I'm in no way saying it's not worth the $300 that it costs because I absolutely think it does. But this being an $85 knife that's also super corrosion resistant, it adds to my level of not having to worry. Because even though I don't have to worry about the waypoint being like getting corrosion, I do still have to worry about how expensive it is and that I don't want to lose or ruin that knife doing something stupid with it. This is a knife that's super lightweight and, and so good at being corrosion resistant and carries well and goes in hand well. So there won't be a single circumstance where I'll be afraid <laughs> that this knife could get damaged or anything because it's just not expensive enough for me to have real worries about it. It's replaceable at the end of the day. Do I look at $85 objects as being disposable no like it, it would still be a bummer to lose or break this knife but uh, not nearly as much of a bummer as losing or breaking my waypoint not that i think i'd break my waypoint but you know what i'm getting at anyway the salt 2 is a really compelling knife i genuinely am glad that i experienced it and i'm glad that i own it because it's not going to go in my pocket every day it might even go a month at a time without going in my pocket but the times that it will it'll be the knife that most makes sense to go in my pocket to do that kind of thing do i have a, a huge redundancy of gear at this point to where i'm finding like super niche items to fill very particular tasks yeah 
Most people who aren't into knives like I am wouldn't even carry a knife kayaking. Or if they do, they're putting their knife in their pocket and they own a pocket knife or maybe a couple. And it's not like this weird thing where they're, they're buying super streamlined gear for activities that they very rarely do like I am. I get that that's kind of absurd, but it's fun for me. I enjoy it. And I imagine a lot of you out there can probably relate to that if you're watching a knife review right now. So anyway, that'll be that. This is the Spyderco Salt 2 in H1 steel. And it's basically a Delica kind of. There are some subtle differences. I'll let you talk to an expert on that. But the point is, I like it. I love the Ergos. I like the blade stock thickness. I like the way it cuts. I like the way it's ground. I like the, the, the way it indexes in my hand. I like the weight. I am fine with the way it carries. Is it the best knife in pocket ever? No, but it's lightweight. It's pretty slim. It's easy to carry and kind of forget that it's there. And it's just, it's really well done. I like it quite a bit. So I'm not hooked on Japanese spider codes. I'm not going to go start a, a line of my collection that's Japanese spider codes, but this is a Japanese spider code that's welcome to stay, and I'll gladly have it. So there it is, the salt too. Just realized I almost forgot to say as well, anytime that I get a piece of gear from the guys over at River's Edge Cutlery, I want to make an absolute point to shout them out even sometimes when it's gear I didn't get from them, but it's just available from them because they are sincerely my favorite knife retailer in the game. They are awesome people. They are so good. They're helping out with my giveaway. They're, they're just supportive of me as a channel. If you like the type of content that I make, please, if you're looking to buy a knife, support them. They're just awesome dudes. The staff over there is really cool. They're all such nice guys who use their gear and appreciate gear like we do. And so I'm going to link to their Instagram, their website, and their YouTube down below. If you're not following them on any of those or subscribe to their newsletter or whatever, check them out, do those things. And uh, if you're looking to buy a knife and they've got it, they're the ones who are worth giving your money to more than any other retailer, in my opinion, from all the experiences I've had with other retailers and uh, just the way that they do business is, is different and better. So there you have it. Thank you so much to River's Edge Cutlery. This is a knife I did get from them and they're awesome. So if you're looking for one of these, I think they still have it. I'll link to this on their site as well. So you can see that there. So there you have it. Salt too.